Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and this is going to be a pretty quick and simple video. Um, <clears throat> if you have a Jazzmaster or a Mustang or any of the Fender Offset guitars, mm -hmm. you might have a bridge that looks pretty similar to this one on it. And um, these bridges have a number of issues that I'm not particularly a fan of. Um, like the big one that I have a gripe about is the fact that they put the uh, intonation screw like right underneath where the string is supposed to go. That is super inconvenient for doing setups. Um, but that's not necessarily a thing that the player has to deal with. That's a thing I have to deal with here in the repair shop. The thing that the player has to deal with is the thing I'm talking about today which is that oftentimes when you get these bridges in, the uh, height screws on these are pretty loose. And what happens is, is that the saddles can kind of float around a little bit. And so after you've gotten the height set on the strings and you've got the radius set on the strings, you start playing on the thing and the saddles will kind of the screws will kind of work themselves through these little holes and they'll kind of start to get all cockeyed and stuff and lower the strings and cause buzzing problems and just generally kind of mess up the setup. And so if this is an issue that you've been dealing with on, on one of these bridges, um, I'm going to show you a pretty quick and simple and cheap way to deal with it. Um, basically, we're going to be using a product that's made exactly for this type of situation, which is this blue uh, thread locker here. Now this one is made by Prime Lock, I guess. Um, there's a bunch of different companies out there that make a product like this. The nice thing about these are that they're all pretty consistent in like the colors and the type of thing that they are and what they're going to do. That's important because thread locker comes in a lot of different flavors. So there's some thread locker out there that you put on things that you literally never want to move again. This is the type of stuff that like when you're doing uh, head gasket jobs in, in cars, like this is the stuff that you put down in those bolt holes because like you definitely don't want those bolts moving. But in this case, we're definitely going to want these screws to move we just don't want them to move quite as easily as they're moving currently um, and so we're going to be using this stuff here now the first step to this is that we're going to go ahead and we're going to shake this up because this is actually a solution um, with little particles and stuff in it and the particles are actually pretty important to how this works uh, so you definitely want to shake this up and make sure that you're getting everything that's in the bottle out in this little drop that you're going to use here. And it should look kind of creamy when you when you put it on there. If it's like really dark blue, you might have just gotten the liquid portion of that and not so many of the particles. Um, and next what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever size Allen wrench or screwdriver or whatever, um, you know, goes with your particular screws and you're going to go in there and you're going to pull them out. Now you see how easily this screw glides out of there. Um, this thing is really not that uh, tightly fit. And in fact, when I go in there and I and if I hold down that saddle and I kind of grab that screw, I can feel a little bit of play in there. So these are really not done to, you know, any kind of uh, precise tolerance, uh, which is the problem with this thing to begin with. Um, so then we're going to take our uh, Loctite here and we're going to take a toothpick. And um, the reason that we're using a toothpick is because this stuff here, even though it's not supposed to like lock threads down like permanent permanently um, this stuff if applied in any kind of large quantity can definitely cause things to be really sticky and hard to adjust now you need to keep in mind that these things are really tiny and so it's very easy for these little tiny heads in here this little this little hex socket to get stripped out if you've got a screwdriver you know it's really easy to end up with those stripped out too this is a tiny little screw and we need to be delicate and treat it as the tiny little screw that it is so what we're going to do is we're going to take this toothpick and on the whole side of this thing we're not going to apply it to this we're going to apply it in the hole and the reason that we're doing that is that if we apply it to this if you start handling this with your fingers you're going to get all that thread locker all over your fingers which means that you get it all over the bridge um, it also means that when you start, you know, screwing this down in there, you'll end up with this like kind of stuff that'll kind of come oozing out the top, which is also going to be messy and you don't want that. So you want it in the hole so that it kind of can go get pushed down further in the hole and along the threads of the screw that we're putting in and not end up all over the place. We're going to take one little toothpick full, right, like this, and we're just going to kind of dip that around in there. And then we're going to take this. We're going to use the wrench to lift this up here and insert that. And then we're going to drive this screw through 
almost all the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this screw out again. So we're gonna back it out after we've put it in. And what you'll notice is that even though it's still easy to take in and out again, that the threads on there might have gotten a little darker and that darker color is because there's a little bit of thread locker on there now. We're gonna take another little toothpick, uh, toothpick tips worth and we're gonna just go in there again. We're just gonna apply a little more, a little more. That's all we're gonna need. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna insert this again and we're gonna drive it almost all the way to the top again. Now, what you might notice when you do this is that there isn't really a whole lot of difference in feel when you pull it out and when you do the thread locker and you put it back in again. Now, if you're doing this, you might think, well, what are you, crazy? This, this feels exactly the same. This isn't going to do anything to prevent the problem that I've been having. Well, the thing about this thread locker is, is that it's kind of a little bit like a glue. And so it needs to cure out and dry out. And so what I want you to do um, is to go ahead and set the bridge down once you have all of those uh, holes done and you have all of the screws coated and just leave it sitting for like 10 minutes. Come back to it in about 10 minutes and then try adjusting that screw. And what you're gonna notice is that it's a lot firmer. It's a lot harder to move and it's gonna stay put when you do your adjustments and you do your setup, which is what you want. Uh, and you're still going to be able to move it around so if you have followed along here and not put too much in there. The problem with putting too much of this stuff in there, and it really doesn't take a lot to be way too much, um, is that when you leave that stuff sitting for a long period of time, it can kind of harden and it can kind of become really hard to go in there and adjust. And at that point, you're going in here and you are having to play the game of, well, do I want to gamble with how hard that steel is or how strong that glue is holding that stuff in place? Because if the glue is holding it, strong, holding it stronger than the steel is, well, what's gonna end up happening is either your wrench or the uh, little socket in there, most likely the little socket in there is gonna get stripped out. And when that happens, you're in a whole nother ball game in terms of how difficult that job has become uh, because you're gonna have to figure out a way to remove that screw. And there are ways to do it. If you do that, it's not the end of the world, but it is a lot tougher and I would recommend bringing it into a shop at that point to have that done. So, Anyway, um, this is a pretty common problem with these bridges. This is a pretty cheap and easy solution. This stuff costs just a few bucks. If you go down to any hardware store, they're gonna have it. Um, typically in the aisle where you know, you're gonna find the glues and epoxies and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think sometimes you might find this over in the hardware section, uh, kind of over in the area where they keep their screws and stuff. Um, but like I said, pretty cheap. Toothpicks are also cheap and Dixie cups are also cheap. Um, and the Dixie cup honestly could be literally anything that you could, you know, put down. Thick piece of card paper or whatever would work just fine. Um, you just need it to not uh, immediately soak up the uh, solution like that. So anyway, hopefully you found this video helpful and hopefully it solves the problem that you've been having with your guitar. This has uh, been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. If you liked this video and enjoyed it uh, and you have some friends that might be into it or you have some friends that are experiencing this problem, please feel free to link them this video. That always helps out. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, all of that good stuff. Um, and if you found this particularly helpful and you feel like dropping me a tip, there's a link in the description to my Ko-Fi and my Patreon where you can throw a little money my way. That always helps out a lot. Um, in that description, you'll also find a link to my Reverb page where I sell some stuff. Occasionally, I'll pull really cool stuff off of guitars like this bridge or like some other stuff, and I'll throw them up on my Reverb page for sale. So you might find something there that you've been looking for. I also have a link down there to my website where I have my contact information, my pricing info for doing repair work, as well as a page Page that I wrote on caring for stringed instruments. Um, recently, I added a page about fretwork, basically everything you could possibly want to know about fretwork, going fretless, compound radius, uh, stainless steel, gold evo, all of that stuff is in there. Any question that you've ever had about doing fretwork, going fretless, or anything about fingerboards, fretboards, 
it's on that page. And so if you have any questions that you've been just itching to ask, um, you know, check that out. There might be some answers in there for you. And if you don't find the answer that you're looking for, please shoot me an email, let me know, because I'd like to make that page as complete as possible. Um, coming up on my website at some point in the future, um, I do intend on adding some electronics pages to some basic diagrams. I might uh, do that through Patreon as well. I'm not quite sure which I'm going to do yet. It's kind of a toss up. It might be a little bit of both. Um, but keep your eye out for that in the future. Anyway, this has been uh, Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Thank you for watching.